Morning, Chris. Thank you very much for coming on the Posh Cotney podcast. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, have you been coping since lockdown's been lifted? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been a it's been a strange old return to work. Really, it's uh, the pace of pace of life is certainly different on the other side of COVID, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's the new world, the new normal. I mean, we're still t- dipping our toe in the water at the moment, aren't we? We don't really know what it is, but um, I think people are giving it their best efforts. So, tell me about you, then, Chris. Um, what what has been your hospitality journey so far? So for me, I um, was working in bars for a brief period for a couple of years, uh, quite high volume bars down in Bournemouth. Um, my background is actually in sales and marketing within wholesale distribution for hospitality. Um, so I've been doing that now for about eight and a half years now through various companies. But um, it gives me a, a quite a unique perspective on the hospitality trade as I'm able to work with you know, the best part of 600 different businesses in their different formats and, and obviously all the staff that are connected with that really and um you you've created something very special right now haven't you um why don't you tell the listeners about what what, what you're working on right now yeah sure i mean the burnt chef project is uh well it was a little passion project of mine um started about a year ago back in may 2019 just to raise awareness for mental health issues within hospitality um because it was one of those sort of unspoken things that was going on behind the scenes and, and sort of no one really ever ever addressed it in volume or in mass. So I started taking photos, black and white photos, to raise awareness for mental health issues. Uh, and it very quickly transpired that actually uh, the conversation needed to be much larger and much broader and much harder hitting than, you know, than some photos. So whilst the photos remain now, the Burnt Chef Project is a full-on campaign to um, eradicate mental health stigma within workplace educate and train both uh, employees and also employers in workplace adjustments and how to manage mental health both individually and that of their peers and colleagues and staff as well Um, and we do that through online content uh, online training and also merchandise i mean mental health in hospitality well i mean i've been in hospitality 15 years and when we spoke before this um it's just, it's crazy how much there is and how many people suffer and how many people are silent. And um, it's great that somebody like you is doing something about it. I, I'm, I'm intrigued to know how many people are actually um, taking up this opportunity to, to speak and, and share their, their thoughts and not suffer in silence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, there's a term badge of honour with it. I've, I've used a few times and I think it gets banded around quite a lot in hospitality whereby you know you're not the weak link you're not the one to let the team down you're the one that keeps pushing and graphs and just keeps quiet for the benefit of the company and the benefit of the service um, but initially I sort of gingerly stepped my toe in the water with this thinking it probably wouldn't get any traction but we're regularly getting messages from people now who are going you know, I wish this was around 10 years ago when I was still in the industry or it's so nice to know that I'm not alone and I've got confidence now that I can actually speak out about this. And these are regular messages on a daily basis, which reaffirms what I'm doing is correct uh, and it's right and it's the right time and right place. And we've had messages of support from family members as well who have said that actually if this was around you know, five, 10 years ago, then perhaps their relatives or their friends would still be around now, um, the ones that they have lost from um, things like suicide and, and mental health issues. So, as I say, it's 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 reaching a wider audience every single day. Um, we've luckily Candice Brown. We had a nice piece in the Daily Mail on the Sunday um, of her wearing one of our t-shirts. So it's starting to hit the mainstream, and we really feel that by just our very existence, we're providing people with a voice and a peace of mind that they actually. This is something that they can talk about and they no longer have to be afraid of the stigma that's attached to it. And how would, how would say I was looking for some help? How would I approach it? What would I need to do? Okay, well, if you're looking for help personally, if you're in immediate distress, there are a number of services out there well equipped to be able to deal with that. So there's a good service, which is a text-based service called Shout, whereby you can text 24 hours a day as a free service and they'll be able to offer you immediate assistance, uh, someone to talk to, without judgment. Uh, Samaritans is also another good one as well, obviously a well-known one, but these services aren't to be underestimated. You know, in a moment of need, um, at a moment of dire circumstance, 
they're a real light and a beacon of hope for those that might be struggling. And it's important to be able to reach out and know that those services are available without judgment 24 hours a day. If you're um, someone who has sort of struggling with their own mental health issues and aren't perhaps in a, a distressing position, then it's important to start looking at the root causes of why uh, you're experiencing those problems. You know, if you're finding that you're having anxiety or panic attacks in certain situations, then there may be a cause and a, a reason for that. And sometimes you can find that just by discussing it with other people. Um, sometimes you'll need cognitive behavioral therapy or uh, a therapist or a counselor to be able to help you identify that root cause. Um, but I think the first part of call is to open up and to confide in someone that you trust without the fear or worry that you know you're going to be judged uh, off the back of that that in itself has a huge therapeutic help and it allows you to start on your journey in terms of identifying and rectifying the reasons why you're feeling in a certain way um, obviously the burnt chef project is available you, there's a lot of resources on our website and also on our social media channels as well which may help you better manage your own mental health and stave off mental illness um, through mindfulness exercises, through um, structural support, um, plus also there's quite a few resources on our website that link you up to other third party services. I love the fact that companies can get involved in this and actually train themselves and train some of their senior staff to maybe look out for signs and, uh, and, and help their employees. Yeah, it's a very, you know, I think it's one of those things that's been so under the radar for so long that people can't touch it. They can't feel it. Mental health is non, non tangible in terms of nine times out of 10, you can't even see that ill mental health is occurring within someone. Yeah. Um, and as a result, that's that provides a hot bit of, I think, fear for a lot of employers because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to fix it. They don't know what the impact of their business is. So it's important from our perspective to try and train as many people as possible, both management and also staff, in terms of identifying, becoming more aware of what mental health is and to start being able to open up the conversations about it without that sort of fear of the unknown. Um, also the other angle that we're looking at is looking at training staff in more in terms of management techniques mm. because what you tend to find within hospitality is there's such a quick progression route from you know the the lowest role up to the highest roles in terms of management and seniority but there's never usually any man management or man training involved during that process yeah. so we're about to launch some training uh, online which um, currently is paid for, but we're aiming to subsidize that the, the larger we grow. Um, and it will be management trainings in terms of conflict resolution, active listening. It will all be those sort of core skills where that will allow people to better manage their teams, better manage each other without saying the wrong thing or increasing the levels of stress and then further worsening a mental health issue. What would you say is the biggest challenge you face uh, to, to, to grow and, and, and uh, you know, cement your business as, as something that everyone knows in hospitality? Because I didn't know about it until we got introduced by a, a mutual friend. So what challenges do you face? Um, I think scalability is, is one issue. I mean, aside from the operational side of things, money is, uh, despite the fact it's only printed on trees and it's digits on the end of a bank note, it's actually it's, it's quite critical. Um, I think awareness, you know, the, the worst thing about these sort of campaigns is often enough you can disappear into obscurity if you don't shout about yourself well enough. And it takes a bold, bold voice or a stupid voice or however you want to say it to be able to stand up and actually go, do you know what, we're talking about mental health, whether you like it or not. Um, so it's a case of getting more and more people on board, more and more people aware of the Burnt Chef project, more and more people talking about it and asking questions about it. And that furthers our reach furthers the conversations off the back of it really so hopefully the merchandise helps with that and we're seeing a growth of about 100 people a day on on social media as well so it's it's gaining momentum but you know with 3.2 million people in hospitality we've, we've not even scratched the surface yet do you think that growth is also down to the, the climate we're in now that the, the pandemic and people losing their jobs unsure whether they're going to be going back after furlough um you know this is really uncertain time so I, I guess mental health is nearly at its can you say at its peak but it's obviously you know people are definitely going to be 
they'll be, they've been at home for three or four months. They might not want to go back to work. You must be getting all these questions fired at you. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the Burnt Chef project was launched uh, over a year ago now, um, and we were seeing a sustained level of growth and a great deal of interest. I mean, we, I was doing talks to 50 to 100 people at a time with regards to mental health and, and just trying to normalize the conversation around it. And there was a lot of interest there. Um, I do think that COVID has helped boost the conversation, but also on a on a sort of a flip side of that, I think that COVID has also quietened down the conversation of mental health. And you notice that in the in the public, unfortunately, down to a few suicides and we've lost a, a few quite charismatic and well-known people within not just hospitality, but generally in the UK recently due to suicide, we were starting to see the mental health conversation pick up pace. So I think it was a fortunate timing for what we were trying to do at that time. Um, but then COVID has hit, and although there's conversations about mental health, it's sort of getting muddied in this water of COVID. So I think it's, um, you know, for every positive, there's a negative of these situations as well. How can people listening to this right now um, help you um, spread the message? Well, I think the key thing is is to visit our website first and foremost, um, find out a little bit about who we are, what we do, uh, what we're aiming to achieve. You know, this isn't a, a one or two year project. This is a 10 to 15, 20, 30 year project that, you know, we aim to, to only grow in ferocity as, we, as the time goes on. So have a look at the website. Uh, on there, you'll find a lot of interesting resources. You'll find surveys that have been co completed as well. Uh, there's a survey done back in May for 1,300 people. Uh, on hospitality and the feelings and thoughts and it's a really insightful survey for mental health um, and also visit our shop and website we've got merchandise options on there as well which help fund the work that we're doing um, obviously we're a non-profit so there's no profits for shareholders you know this 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 business isn't a, a sake of making money and then walking away all the profit gets re reintroduced and reinvested back into the uh, the burnt chef project so um purchase some of the merchandise you know wear it with pride go around telling people have you heard about us and most importantly if there's anything to take away from this is open up a conversation you know go and speak to someone ask if they're okay and intently listen to their answer you know that could actually change someone's day um with posh you're definitely going to be supporting the, the burnt chef project for sure and we'll share all that after the show i just before we leave you i would i'd like to ask your opinion on what you think is next for hospitality as a whole in the, in the uk yeah i mean i think hospitality have um have proven themselves to be a very resilient industry you know we we in the uk and also worldwide have experienced the I think the worst that COVID has had to throw at us in terms of being the first ones out in terms of the industry shutting down and also now being the last ones back as well. But despite that, hospitality continues to amaze. People are still fighting, they're diversifying, they're using new, um, new business models to be able to increase their reach. Um, and I think that's a really positive sign now i'm hoping that the trend for covid continues the way we're going and that actually there's no flare-ups we get no local lockdowns and it will lead us into a a, a good strong 12-month period of uk tourism uh which hopefully will actually increase well it will give us a, an opportunity to bounce back better uh, i really think that that's a possibility and with the vat cuts that we've had in place as well i think it's an opportunity now for hospitality to see that they are um that they are able to run a sustainable business model. But what I'd be very keen to see after this VAT cut period finishes is actually the government turning around to us and saying, you're the third largest industry in the UK. You know, you really do prop up the economy. And as a result, we think that we need to relook at again at VAT long-term for hospitality and, and make it easier. You know, with net profits of two or 3% for most restaurateurs or hotels out there, I think it's about time that we took a long, hard look at hospitality and thought, you know, we, we need to do something to make this more sustainable, uh, to employ more people and to give better working conditions. 100% agree with all of that, for sure. Chris, can you share your email address um, and website again so people can get in touch with you after the show? Yes, yeah, certainly. So the website address is www.theburntchefproject.com. 
Um, the email to contact me on is info at theburntchefproject.com or alternatively you can find us on Instagram with the same handles, The Burnt Chef Project, uh, or on Facebook, on Twitter as well. So uh, either of those channels, any of those would be fine to contact us on. Amazing. Chris, absolutely pleasure speaking to you, mate. And uh, I wish you all the best. And obviously, like we said on, on air and off air, Posh Cotney will be supporting your project now from, uh, from today. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sam. Bye-bye.